Today's guest is Gabe Arnold. He is the owner of Business Marketing Engine and the host of the podcast, Today's Business Leaders. And he helps impact-driven entrepreneurs create marketing systems and step-by-step technology solutions so that they can achieve their ultimate business freedom. Gabe and I talked about oh so many things on our episode today, including, but definitely not limited to accountability with uh, having some external accountability and um, eliminating unimportant decisions. We, he referenced a variety of professional development books and personal development books. And we also dug into how he loves to spend his 25th hour every day, which for Gabe really looks like most of the day on Fridays. So please enjoy this episode with Gabe. I hope that you I was much fun listening as Gabe and I did recording it. Hey Gabe, I am super excited that you're here today on the 25th Hour Podcast and thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's always fun to catch up and talk to you. I I agree. And what's amazing to me is back when you started your podcast, I was on as one of your first guests and here I am starting my podcast. And you are on as one of my first guests. So it's kind of weird how the world goes. I know, it was three years ago in September, actually, I think. Wow, and look at that. And here we are recording in September. <laughs> it's, and um, I have you to thank for the podcast journey. So um, yeah. thank you for that. And all of you listening, Gabe Arnold is the person who started me on this path. So that is amazing. Excellent. Tell me about how you stay in control of your day. We've known each other for a while. I know you have so many different strategies. So what are some of the things that you use to stay in control of your multiple businesses? Uh, The main thing that I do that you actually taught me is time blocking in my calendar and all my important stuff goes in my calendar. So obviously, you know, our time here is in my calendar. Um, Later today, I have blocked out to finish a project that I'm supposed to finish. And when I'm really on top of things, I will have like a project call with somebody and then have a buffer afterward to delegate and hand out, hand off all those things. But my, my biggest thing is definitely um, having it all on my calendar. And my main accountability driver is meeting with people to present work. So either if it's from one of my team members to me, um, where they need to demo what their, the progress they've made, even if it's not done or whatever. Uh, or like if I, I'm in the middle of a project right now that I'm like part of the way done um, and I know I need to get it done next week. So I'm actually going to reach out to the client and schedule with them for like middle of the week. And that way I'll have it done. <laughs> right. So. Right. And I know that was a huge breakthrough for you to, when you recognized, wait a minute, I'm way more accountable to other people. So tell me more about your thought process behind that strategy. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm super relationally focused. Like, um, I relationships are more important to me than money as well. Something I always tell people because that's the truth. And because of that, knowing that that's something that super drives me, I've basically engineered anything important I want to get done in my life relationally. Um, I was talking to my younger brother, my youngest brother, actually, um, Andrew, who, who helps people create, health and fitness plans so that they actually do what they're supposed to do and i had a consult with him and um we uncovered like once again like no surprise to you obviously because he helped me uncover this originally but he's like oh like you just want to do stuff with people so i'm like yeah so we set up a plan where i work out with a couple of my brothers i do stuff with we uh, i do rachel uh, yoga with rachel sometimes and that's been like the biggest secret um is just if I want to accomplish something, basically get an accountability buddy, but schedule my calendar with somebody and show up to either do the work together or show up and say, I will have my work done before we meet and I'll present it to you. Because I don't, I'm not somebody that intentionally anyway lets people down and doesn't show up for my work done. It happens on occasion, but, um, <laughs> but that way I, I can produce a ton and, and drive through a lot. Um, the only challenge with that is that when I get busy, I, I still have to watch that I don't overcommit to what I can do because then I end up working late or squeezing things in or um, there's a there's a balance there for me. And I actually 
actually took a really interesting um, personality test called the Colby A index. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's awesome. It like helped me feel even more normal. It said like doing things last minute is great for you. So I was like, oh, that's good to hear. I just need to not make sure I do too much <laughs> at once last minute because um, under pressure is when I'm the most creative and I do my best work. So that's been part of the process too, is figuring out I'm relationally driven. So if I organize all my priorities on my calendar that way, then I'll accomplish my goals. And then also um, realizing that I do do my best work last minute and it's okay to do that. I just have to make sure I give myself enough last minute time, if that makes any right. sense. Right. Absolutely. If you can build the time into your calendar yeah. right up before the deadline, yeah. then you give yourself the space to produce last minute yeah. You still have the um, excitement of it being last minute without it keeping you up until midnight it's or exactly. 2 a.m. Because you, you are a late night worker. Yeah. I, in my natural state, I would, I would screw around all day and do nothing. And then around like 8 or 9 o'clock at night is probably when I'd actually start working. And then I would work till like 4 or 5 in the morning. But it doesn't really work well when you have to, I have to take my son to school and like I want to function in society. So I don't do a ton of that. But I've actually engineered in that I always have the option Thursday night to work as late as I want and not do anything Fridays. Um, so I've kind of got the best of both worlds. <laughs> so. Well, you, you're maximizing the time that you are most productive and that you naturally flow into without alienating everyone who loves you. <laughs> exactly. And I also am this is a, a shift I made earlier this year. Um, I don't generally speaking, I don't take any appointments until 11 AM. So that way I can ease into my day, work out, eat breakfast, do what I want, take my son to school, sleep in if I feel like it, if I worked really late. Um, and that's been really freeing too. Cause if I start too early in the day, then that just, it stresses me out and gives me anxiety for no reason other than it's like not my, ideal time to work and right. that was the other fun thing that you and I talked about is biological prime time which I always remember too is like there's certain times we're just on and everything's possible and there's other times when we should not be trying to work <laughs> so well yes um it's funny because this morning I had a networking meeting even virtually it was still at 8 a.m oh, and as I'm getting ready to sit down I was trying to put myself in that place of well it used to be worse because you used to be in the car at seven driving to this that's right. And then I thought, all right, I'm starting my day with it used to be worse. Like, <laughs> what is wrong with me? You know, and I started to think through, this yeah. is why I don't love 8 a.m. meetings because it, I have a routine, you have a routine, and yeah. it kind of bumps up against my routine. And then I feel kind of out of sorts the rest of the day. What other things have you put into a routine? Because I know that you're very systems focused, very routines focused. What else do you do to Especially, let me rephrase the question because that was so such a wide question. Specifically, what else do you do to help keep you from letting work expand throughout your whole life? Um, for me, like the two parts there. So like from a routine perspective, I try to eliminate any decision that's unimportant. So Generally speaking, I don't pick out my own clothes. Rachel does that for me because she likes, she loves doing all stuff for me, which is the greatest. So if you're an entrepreneur, you need a Rachel is what I tell people. Yes. But, <laughs> uh, but she, she picks out my clothes. If I travel, she packs my bags, does all that. Um, she makes me breakfast, lunch, and dinner almost all the time. There's like maybe one night a week I may feed myself uh, if she's busy or doing something. And then I, I have all black t-shirts. I have all the same pair of jeans, um, same pair of jeans. I have all the same things all the time because one, I don't really care about that stuff. <laughs> and two, I, if, even if I did, I don't want to decide any of those things. So I, I set all those parts up in my life. So I don't even think about them. I eat literally the exact same thing for breakfast every single day. Um, because it's, again, I don't even think about it and it's easy for me. So I, I try to eliminate meaningless stuff that doesn't matter. I mean, it's a super healthy breakfast, but it's the exact same thing every day. <laughs> and so that keeps me free to like use my brain power and creativity and focus for things that matter to me. Um, the other thing that I did, that I just shifted because I actually just had um, Alex Charfin on my podcast yesterday. And then I caught a video from him later 
and he reminded me of something that I that I know, but he kind of broke it down in a more clear way that um, the laws of physics apply everywhere. So a, a body that's in motion tends to stay in motion and a body at rest tends to stay at rest. And so how you start your day is how you will finish your day. And so he reminded me that if you pick up your phone and you get on social media first thing in the day, then you're asking your brain to be reactive. And if you ask your brain to be reactive, then you're going to end up being reactive all day and keep picking up your phone and keep liking a post or keep doing things that are great, but maybe aren't your goal for the day. So I um, decided to delete all social media off my phone because I have it on my computer and my iPad and like I have it everywhere and I'm, I'm very active and I love it, but I don't need to start my day that way. So in the, um, in the morning that allows me to read and focus and it actually stretches the time out. Um, context in time for me is really interesting because I've realized uh, a friend of mine told me this a long time ago and now it's happening to me, but he said, he said, the older you get, the faster time goes because your context is wider. He's like, when you're a kid, like you've only been alive for, you know, 10 years. And so an, an hour seems like forever because you've only experienced so many hours. Right. But by the time you get cl a lot closer to 40, like I am, um, then you've gone through so much so that everything seems super fast. And there's just a lot of context that makes things seem fast. In your day, you can slow down time if you eliminate little decisions and little actions and things that don't matter, then just actually sit at the breakfast table and talk to, you know, talk to your partner or sit and read a book or meditate and slow time down. And when you do that, you reclaim time. It's a really odd mm -hmm. thing until you experience it. Like, hopefully that's a decent description. Absolutely. You know, I'm remembering, and I can't remember where I read this, but I think we may have read something very similar because um, it's something also about new experiences. Like when you can be in the moment with new experience, those will take up space. Right? You drive the same work, like if, or if you drive the same, way, the same path 40 times, in your memory, it condenses down to one time. Gotcha. That's cool. And yeah. And so now as you sit and engage with Rachel at breakfast, you're having a different conversation. And so it's creating a, I don't want to say a bigger memory because now I'm going to mess up the science, um, but the it's, it, yeah. it's, um, it's more impactful. Um, yeah. And I remember doing a Facebook live when I was in Sedona talking about this concept about how you go to conferences after conferences after conferences and they kind of condense down into the same conference. <laughs> yeah. But here we were in Scottsdale, we took the trip to Sedona and now here's all this. And I can remember much more specific things about that conference or many more specific things about that conference because That's... we paused. Yeah. I like that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you are most welcome. I had forgotten all about that concept. You brought it up because at first I was thinking, cause I think, were you the person who recommended to me the big leap yeah. with Einstein time? Yeah. So that's where I thought you were going with this about stretching time out. Yeah. That Einstein time is amazing. And for anybody that hasn't read the big leap, you're crazy. You should read it. It's a, it's a super yes. important book to read, but anyway, um, it talks about how like, you know, everybody's busy, we don't have time or whatever. And then the example they give is like, if your kid or your spouse or whoever comes in and is like, I just cut my finger, you have all the time in the world, like nothing else is going on and you have total focus there. And that, that was an impactful concept for me too. Um, so back to your actual original question, <laughs> I, I try to show up intentionally all the time and I'm not, I'm, I don't do perfectly at it, but I think I'm getting better at that. And because of that, I can be present and prioritize throughout the day. And I'm okay now with saying like, you know what, I'm not going to get that thumb today or like, and I don't cancel on people a lot, but on occasion I'll reach out and say, you know what, unfortunately I can't keep the meeting tomorrow. Uh, you know, priorities has shifted. And so I can live a little bit more in the moment. The other big thing for me, and I don't, I wish it was this easy for everybody, but Rachel says it's not. So I always believe her when she tells me these things um, is I can generally speaking flip a switch and change my behavior. So as an example, one of the things I did is 
I think when we first started working together, Lisa, I was working like 70 or 80 hours a week. I can't remember what it was, but it was a lot. Um, at some point, and it's been years now, I just decided that I don't want to work on the weekends. And so I just stopped and I just don't do it because <laughs> it's like, I don't care about work that much over my family and like over my personal time. And so I just stopped doing it. Um, and so that also relates to generally after dinner, it's, it's over for me. We eat at like five or five 30 and I'm like, you know, with the exception of, I periodically hold master classes or something. So once a week I'll work later. Um, and then that spins into me working all night and being creative and having fun, which is good for me. But generally speaking, like I just cut it off because you know, my son's gonna be nine this fall and he will never be nine again, ever. And I only have nine more summers with him. And so I'm not, I really don't, like, I love my work and I love my clients and I love my team, but it's not gonna dominate my entire life because it's, it's only a portion of my life. Um, then it needs to be in harmony with and balance with the rest of what I'm doing. And so I like to tie really important things or, or, critical decisions to really important things. Cause again, I'm relational. So like, I'm not going to cheat Rachel and Arliss out of time because there's a big project tomorrow because I didn't get it done on time or because the client didn't get back to me. Like there's all these other factors, right? That has nothing to do with them. It's not their fault. So I've just continually made the commitment to prioritize what really matters to me and take time to think about that. Um, and generally that guides me really well. And then on occasion, I will tell Rachel and even tell Aris, like we are coming into a really busy season with work and I need to do these things. And so for the next 90 days, I'm going to work like crazy. I may work 16 hours a day. I'll do whatever I need to do, but I, but I will be done on, you know, November 1st or what, whatever the cutoff date is. And then I cut it off because if, because otherwise you'll kill yourself if you work that much, like you'll, you will have no quality of life and you're not achieving anything and you're hurting your company. And that's what people don't really think about or realize is that as soon as you start working over 40 hours, you are harming your company and it, it, for extended periods of time. Like, again, like I said, there's a short season, we all can push and do more, but if you don't manage that, then you're setting a bad example. You're not at top capacity. You're throwing everything out of balance and you're not scaling a company. You're scaling your own hours, which is not going to yes. make any more money. <laughs> so. right. right. Absolutely. Um, that's one of my favorite books is a productivity project with Chris Bailey. And he yeah. does that experiment where he works 20 hours and he works 80 hours and the magic number is like 43, like yeah. 40, like 37 to 43 is sustainable. And like you have the best of all the worlds exactly. and you can jump it above 43 for a couple of days and gain it. But after a while, it's no longer there. Yeah. You just mentally wear out and physically wear out and I don't know. It must be some like universal law or something. It's a lot even bigger than our own physicality and things too. I think it just doesn't work. Um, so one thing that I've done that I do off and on as needed is, and I don't do this perfectly, but is I take off Fridays. And so I block those out and then it's totally up to me if I want to schedule in there. So it's not open for my assistant to schedule and it's not open for my automatic links that people can schedule in and compressing my work week into four days has always made me more money. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. You're more productive. You're choosing the higher impact things because you feel like you have less time, yeah. even though you're choosing that. It just yeah. is that sense of urgency yeah. that like you said, is one of your strengths is to work well under pressure and you yep. created that for yourself. Yeah, definitely. You know, I'm thinking about you sharing about how you like you share with um, Arliss and with Rachel for the next X number of days, mm -hmm. this is going to happen. You know, it may be more work. It may be this, it may be that, which is so much more intentional than letting it slide. Like a lot of my, a lot of the time I hear my clients say, as soon as things slow down yeah, or as okay. soon as this product project is over, or yeah. when I hit this place and then that bar keeps moving and shifting. And then it's five years, 10 years, 15 years. And you're intentional by saying, I will work X, Y, Z hours until this point. Right. And I always think it's crazy. Like as soon as things slow down, if you own your own business, do you want things to slow down? Like why are you throwing that out there? I know I'm, I'm working with a couple different clients right now 
um, with some new projects and one of them works seven days a week. And I, and I've told him, I said, that will kill you. I said, so that's the first thing we have to solve and stop is because there's production and issues and marketing and all these things that we're helping with. I'm like, but relatively soon, because they're paying me to consult about their whole operation, I'm going to put my foot down and say, you are no longer allowed to work on the weekends. And they're going to freak out because that's what people do. Um, and I'm going to say, if you do this, your company will go. And if you don't, your company is not going to go. And it's, it's, there's definitely that diminishing point of return. And none of us went into business to work 80, 90, 100 hours a week. Not last I checked. <laughs> that was not right. the goal. Right. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Yeah. Like I always, I think I started my business for freedom. It would be nice if like I made sure that I had freedom because I'm the one taking the freedom away. Right. Like, no one's taking it away from me. It's me not doing the things I need to do. My clients not doing the things I need to do. But speaking of clients, tell us what is it that you do? Who do you work with? So we work with um, all sorts of different entrepreneurs and business owners who are looking to really build solid marketing assets that are going to pay them for years. And so, you know, getting the right message out there, you know, communicating what you're about, who you serve and who you help is what we help our clients do. And instead of following just the latest trends or just the latest thing, which we could all, you know, chase shiny objects <laughs> and technology and marketing forever, we look at and say, what are the foundational things you need to be successful in the long run? And that's what we help our clients invest in and build as marketing assets. And as an example, like if you don't, if you're not constantly growing your email list, then you're leaving money on the table. If you're not, you know, consistently branding yourself to the right size audience, you don't have to brand yourself to the whole world. And you're not, not everybody's Coca-Cola, um, you know, but if you're, if you're not branding consistently, then your sales is going to be harder and people aren't going to know what you do. So when their time and need comes for your service, um, you know, they won't be aware of you. So we really start with foundational things by building a full year long marketing plan. And then we help our clients build out asset by asset and get it producing the results. And then we help them automate that process so that they can focus on growing their business. Any type of client that you love working with more than all the rest? Cause I know you love your clients. I do. I love them all. Um, <laughs> I think the clients that I enjoy working with, with the most are like, just avid learners. They're always reading or figuring out something new or studying people or, you know, learning about their industry. Cause that's something I'm passionate about is learning all the time. So I super connect with people that are learning or studying or figuring out new things. Like I always like hearing about stuff you're, you're reading about or, you know, what you're up to. Cause I'm actively always trying to learn something new and that feeds into my ability to like deliver in a pinch because I usually have a ton of, you know, random stuff sitting in my head that then becomes useful. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I love work, working with clients that are actively trying to learn because for me that, that ties into the fact that if you're constantly trying to learn and grow and improve, then you, in most cases, are just as committed to the success of your business as we are as your partner in, you know, the marketing and the technology solutions we provide. And so it makes things a lot easier um, for anybody, regardless of what service you offer. Um, I heard Jay Abraham say this a few weeks ago on a call I was on with him. And he said, I find, he said, I finally realized that I can't help clients who aren't as serious about making their business successful as I am about making their business successful. I was like, wow, I think that's brilliant and simple as usual. Um, so that's something that I, I noticed is that when clients are active learners, go-getters, try new things, will engage and do stuff, that it's because they're committed to their business's growth. And that's definitely the type of people I like working with. When I was going through my coach training, one of the things they told us earlier is if you're in an engagement with a client and you're working harder than they are, you're doing it wrong. That's right. <laughs> like, as a coach, it's my job to ask the questions and it's not my job to tell or to push or to whatever. And I will remember that if I'm feeling uneasy working with a client, I was like, Oh, it's cause you're working too hard. Yeah. And you know, and it's not that I'm a slacker. It's just that it's not my job to fix it. Yeah. It's my job to help show the ways it can be fixed. Yeah. And that's been hard for me to learn, but I'm, I'm slowly learning that. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, and one of the things I love when we talk is you are so committed to the idea that growth is continual. 
Like it's not a place you get to and then you're done. It's that journey over and over and, and every piece opens up the avenues for 30 more pieces that yeah. open up again and it's just exponential. Yeah. I'm always amazed at this. When I follow you on Facebook all the time, I'm like, oh, look, at, he read this. Oh, let me add that to my list. <laughs> Yep. No, it's, I, I absolutely love learning and reading and there's, you can, I tell people like, and I've, I've actually like sat down and tracked it periodically. I don't track it all the time, but I'm like, I make $50,000 every time I read a book. So why would you not read a book? Right. Without question, it always becomes useful to me in the relative near future. And I read all nonfiction and business strategy and marketing stuff like that. I don't read much fiction and that's all. It's great if people do, but personally for me, I want to read something that I can apply and use and like, change somebody's life or build my business or help somebody in their business. Um, so yeah, I, I absolutely love reading. Now, do you prefer reading over listening? Um, I do about half and half. So because when I'm driving, it's obviously easier, easier to listen. So I, I guess probably if I could only do one, I would probably listen because I listen to books on like three or four X. And so, right. Uh, so I, I can burn through them and gather all I want. I can read super fast too, but and you have to be like sitting somewhere like physically not doing other stuff. So I, so if I only had one, I'd probably do audible, um, you know, audible stuff. Cause I have zillions of books in there, but I just bought myself a treadmill too. So I'll be walking and reading too. So. Okay. Well, and that, um, you know, two X, three X, I picked that tip up from you. And so now I don't watch anything on YouTube at regular speed. Like if I'm on there looking at something, like it's as fast as it'll go. Exactly. Cause, and, cause then if you find what you need, you can always slow it down and catch that part again. And, and if you just bump up like a half speed every month, eventually three X will sound like this conversation, right? And it's right. like it's totally normal. So I can't listen to anything normal speed either anymore. <laughs> I know. Cause that's why you said, like, I can't listen to the, I just, I just can't. Cause if I'm reading, I can skim along, I can skip, I can do whatever. It's like, I can't do this. And now it's like, Oh, thanks to Gabe. I totally can. I can zip right through. <laughs> Uh, so as to what one of the ways you're saving time obviously is like putting things at you know 3x yes lots of ways but what are but and you're gaining that extra hour we're going to say an hour it could be way more than that for you but what do you do with that 25th hour a day that extra time what do you want to do with it um I love binge binge watching television, so I do, I do that when possible. Not as much as I as I want to. I'm rewatching The Sopranos right now. Um, you know, so I watch I watch a lot of like really well written te television, like Breaking Bad, uh, Sopranos, things like that, because that is a way for me to just super decompress and relax. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I love getting outside and you know going swimming with my son and doing things like that and. And it's nice, honestly, just to sit and do nothing too, like to actually decompress or meditate or things like that. So I, I do my best work when I have enough creative time and downtime. Um, so, and then I absolutely love traveling with, with Rachel and my son. So, you know, we, if I have time off or, you know, stuff like that, you know, that's a huge thing that I love doing as well. So what are some of the places you visited that you've liked? Um, Italy was amazing. So we got to go back there. I'm not a huge foodie, but when you're in Italy, you become a foodie. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was some of the best food I've ever eaten in my life. And um, we've been to Sedona, you know, Vegas, um, Cal all of California is a lot of fun to, to travel in. And uh, where else have we been? We've been on a, a few cruises. Like we've been, we haven't been around the whole world yet, but we're working on it. So got to get to all, all the continents here eventually. <laughs> So. <laughs> well, I always wonder about Sedona, like the people who live there, does it get old or, you know, like it's such a beautiful, awe-inspiring place. Yeah. But I've been to twice. So it's not like, you know, so like, I wonder, like when you're sitting there at that restaurant and you're looking out at all those beautiful mountains, I wonder, people who eat here every day, do they still notice it? Is it still as awesome or not? I yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. I would think so. We were, my son and I were in Montana. We drove to Montana this summer and I don't think I could get tired of that. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it's gorgeous. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it, I wonder if it's that, um, that whole thing about driving the same thing to work back and forth, how it just condenses. Yeah. Like, I wonder if you don't take the time to look, right. if all of a sudden it becomes the same, it just feels like the same view. Huh. 
once I, I find that resource, I will be able to reread it and I may have an answer to that. I um, was listening to a book by the Dalai Lama. He was being, it was like him and the psychologist from Arizona, actually. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but I'll look it up. But it was a book of the Dalai Lama, like speaking and stuff. And he, in in there, the psychologist asks him, he says, do you ever feel lonely? Because I guess, I don't know what their religion or role is. Like, I don't know if they're not supposed to get married or whatever, but I, I think that was part of it. And he's like, he's like, no, he's like, I'm never lonely. And he's like, if I sit here and think about like the clothes I'm wearing, you know, to where the material got harvested, to making the thread, to, you know, making the shirt, you know, and getting it delivered to me, you know, or wherever I bought it, or I think about where this food came from. I think about every single, um, you know, piece, uh, p person that touched this process and I'm incredibly grateful. And it reminded me, or it taught me in that moment that um, one, we're connected to everybody. And also, two, if you take that curious approach to every moment in your life, then you can fully maximize that minute, you know, that moment, that even that millisecond, and it, you can slow time down. And it's a really beautiful thing when you can just be immensely grateful and notice every little detail that made up, you know, the beautiful lives that we all live, regardless of where we are, or where we're at, you know, you know, physically and you know, economically and all those things, we all have so much to be grateful for. Wow. That is a perfect place to end our episode today. Where can people get a hold of you, Gabe? Oh, I'm, I'm pretty easy to find on social media. Um, so you can check me out there on Facebook um, is where I hang out a lot, uh, LinkedIn. Um, and then our main site is businessmarketingengine.com. And if you need you know, marketing assets that will perform for you years and years down the road, then we'd be happy to talk to you about that. And I highly encourage all of you to reach out to Gabe. He is as awesome in person as you're seeing him right now on this recording. This is the real Gabe live. Um, and so reach out to Gabe. And thank you, Gabe, so much for being here today and for encouraging me to get started on my journey. Thank you for having me. It's been a blast. Mm -hmm.